TYT would like to thank Squarespace for making possible our coverage of the 2017 Oslo Freedom Forum. Whether you need a website, a domain, or an online store, make your next move with Squarespace. You can start your free trial at squarespace.com slash TYT and you'll get 10% off your first purchase. Welcome back once again our coverage of the 2017 Oslo Freedom Forum. Uh, we're once again lucky to be joined by a pair of activists uh, again fighting to uh, both aid the Syrian people and to spread knowledge of what is really going on inside of Syria. Uh, we have uh, Raid Faris who uh, gave an amazing presentation earlier today and uh, joined by Yad el-Baghdadi, independent activist. Um, so uh, I've read about Raid's uh, sort of beginnings in, in the, the Syrian revolution and he's charted a very interesting path in the form of communicating what's going on, the way that he does his banners, and the way he communicates the outside world. Perhaps he could talk a little bit about how he developed that style. It got started as a group of activists uh, and a group of civil society uh, activists who wanted initially to do something to raise awareness about the massacres in Dara'a in April 2011. The first demonstration that they had in their area, uh, uh, there was a video made of that and it was uploaded as citizen journalism. Uh, it was sent to Al Jazeera and other uh, news agencies and it ran on TV. At the same time, it also ran on, uh, on a TV station called Al Dunya TV, which is uh, a pro-Assad uh, uh, you know, media outlet. Uh, they aired that saying that it's not from Syria. Uh, they claimed that this was actually from an Egyptian village. Uh, and then they aired it again saying that it's actually from Dara, not, not from the north of Syria. Uh, the reason why they could do that, they could uh, claim that this video was uh, recorded elsewhere, is that uh, the demonstration did not have banners and it did not have flags and it did not have any indication of where it was. This is why the idea ca uh, came up to always have a banner uh, with, a, with, a, with a message and with the name of the, lo the location of the demonstration and the date. So there's all, there was also the problem that the demonstrations did not uh, properly communicate what were the, the, the demands of the demonstrators. So there, from there came the idea of having banners, having cartoons, having any kind of uh, you know, illustrations to communicate what, what the demands of the demonstrators are. Yeah, I saw that there were sort of pop culture references to sort of draw attention with Alien or uh, like uh, music albums and things like that being used, the art. So definitely one of the main uh, goals was to reach the Western mainstream and to be able to speak to people in Western societies, which is why uh, they made sure to communicate in English and to use a lot of references that are familiar with the Western audience. Uh, the, the point was to, uh, to, to, to give a universally uh, understandable message. So uh, I did want to bring up uh, one difficult period in Ride's life. So many people th would assume that operating in an area where there's potential danger from Assad, danger from uh, Daesh, um, that you your life could be threatened, and his, in fact, was. And there was, of course, the attack. Maybe he could tell uh, the, our audience a little bit about what that was like. Uh, to start, in the beginning, when the area in which uh, Riot operated was still under Assad control, uh, initially Assad's army was still in the area and they, they had a citizen journalism uh, kind of office and every time they would set up an office, uh, uh, Assad's forces would come and uh, you know, break in. After Assad was driven out from the, from, from the area, uh, it was the Free Syrian army for a while. But after that, after the rise of ISIS, ISIS also uh, attacked uh, their offices more than once and uh, imprisoned uh, or detained for a while the people who were working there. In January 2014, Ra'id was uh, going home, back home from the office. He had just parked the car and just gotten out of the car, just closing the door. And uh, just three meters away from him were, were uh, ISIS militiamen who opened fire from AK-47s. 
uh, firing over 50 shots at him. Three of them uh, hit him in the chest and it took him four months to recover. Uh, part of that was uh, in Turkey and in the, in the United States. Uh, after ISIS was, dri was driven out of the area, um, uh, it, the influence of Al-Qaeda in the region increased. Uh, in December 2014, they arrested Ra'id and they tortured him by hanging him from the ceiling uh, for several hours and uh, he had just had the operation for you know, the, the, the gunfire wounds that he had from uh, the ISIS attack. 20 days later, uh, Al-Qaeda members again uh, broke into the radio station and took away their equipment. That's because this is civil society activism, and civil society activism is always intimidating to all forms of, 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 of tyranny, and they always try to clamp down on it. First of all, it's amazing that, that he keeps going despite almost dying from the gunfire, and I'm very lucky that those ISIS fighters were horrible shots, that they're so terrible. <laughs> <laughs> The, they, they were actually quite accurate. <laughs> well, the three is, is enough. That's a problem. <laughs> it's definitely never occurred to, to Ra'id to, uh, to end his activism or to, to seek safety. When they started their activism, he was not alone. He was one of many who started their activism in 2011. Uh, and at the time they started, they knew that their, their, their lives are going to be endangered. And that was a risk that they were willing to take right from the beginning. Many of his colleagues died. Some of them died right in front of him while, you know, while he was doing his, doing his job. Uh, he's not going to, to risk their lives but not, uh, and not risk his life. In the end, it's a dream. He either reaches that dream or he dies trying in addition to setting up uh, these media centers, distributing um, the crank-operated radios so that there could continue to be media. Um, I know that he's also set up uh, organizations to sort of uh, help women, to train women in different areas, saying that women are an, an important part of the future of, uh, of free Syria. Maybe he could talk about that. The part about women's empowerment started in 2013, and it was driven by, uh, uh, by the fact that uh, by 2013 it had become a war. Uh, Bashar al-Assad, uh, I mean, the, the Syrian people wanted a revolution, but Bashar al-Assad wanted a war. Uh, and in war, it's men who fight, it's men who die, and it's men who run away because they're, 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 they're running away from forced recruitment in the army. Uh, so when all the men are disappearing, it's only, it, you know, the percentage of women in society, you know, basically it becomes nothing but women. Uh, and this is when it became very important to work on women's empowerment, not only because uh, they're an important, they're an important fa fa uh, you know, factor of society, but because women are always uh, very effective at building societies after war. What does Raid think about uh, the future of both his sort of activism and the, the prospects for improving the situation in Syria? Interestingly, Raid says that he doesn't, his, uh, the military situation does not concern him. The future that he really cares about is the future of civil society and uh, awakening people, awakening society and taking it in the right direction. He says that if civil society activism continues and he believes it is continuing in the right direction, then it will also take society in the right direction. And in the end, uh, the military military situation will become less important because if society is strong enough, uh, then tyranny has no chance. And he believes very strongly that we're moving right now towards sunrise. Well, I certainly hope that he's right. Uh, and I want to thank both of you for taking the time out to, to tell us about what's going on there and for continuing the fight despite the, the threats, obviously, that both of you face. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.